This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. January 24th, you're in Orlando. 25th, you're in Greenville. On uh, the 25th, you're also in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, here we would see you working with Kendall Wyndham. I haven't spent a lot of time talking about Kendall. We've spent a lot of time talking about Barry. Any good Kendall stories you can share with us? Just Kendall was in a tough spot. I mean, his grandfather's Black Jack Mulligan. What a beast. His brother's Barry Wyndham. Here's Kendall. Kendall didn't have the physique didn't have the, um, you know, the, like his grandpa or, or Barry for that matter. He, uh, you know, he was just a smaller guy and was just getting started. He had good skills, but I just don't think that he had the look for that time. I mean, look around the locker room. Mm -hmm. Some, there were some beasts sitting around in there. Kendall was just getting started and was kind of on the beginning of his career. Dorton Arena on January 26th is a TV taping and it airs in February. Uh, but it's kind of a cool segment because Flair's driven to the arena in a white limo. Uh, he's got you and Tully in tow, along with JJ Dillon, and a bunch of ladies are going to step out with Flair as he receives the 1987 Wrestler of the Year Award from the NWA Pro Wrestling Digest. And moments later, uh, Jim Ross is going to conduct an interview with Flair. Where he said Raleigh was the place where he won the Mid-Atlantic TV title, and that's where the horsemen are going to party later that night. Then he's going to talk some trash to Lex Luger. Uh, meanwhile, Tony Schiavone does an interview on this same show with Sting, where Sting is challenging Flair to come out to the ring. Uh, uh, eventually, we are going to see Flair, Anderson, and Blanchard rush the ring. Sting's going to escape, and then he's going to tell him to come back out. We're building towards something with both Lex Luger and Sting. But not on this day. It's Lex Luger and Ricky Santana, and they're going to beat you and Tully Blanchard. I haven't spent a lot of time talking about Ricky Santana. Any good Santana memories you can share with us? Just one. We should have beat Ricky that night. <laughs> <laughs> the only way, I mean, he was skilled. He was not positioned anywhere close. Uh, that should have been, we should have took advantage of that. It's no wonder that Tully's getting a little frustrated. You know, I mean, R Ricky Santana's beating you guys. Mighty Wilbur beat you. I mean, my gosh. Uh, and I refuse to believe Conrad that it was a vindictive thing to just, to just shove it up our keister. I just think they thought we were bulletproof. Right. And we weren't. Yeah. We weren't bulletproof and you could see it, but it backfired because it wouldn't be Ricky Santana. If, if, you know, those guys winning would have been a huge feather in his cap and you would think the audience would go hey they're fixing to do something with this guy you know da, 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 good for him what they started to do is just left a bad taste in their mouth the audience and they started to, to cheer for us a little bit because they knew it was a bullshit deal hey hey it's conrad thompson thanks for checking out the podcast here on youtube be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.